You are listening to the Marginalized Conflicts podcast series, a project of the Introduction to Peace and Conflict Studies course at Colgate University in fall 2008. As a collective, we selected present and past conflicts which we feel are marginalized, either in our own study of history and politics or in dominant narratives of both. We aim to inform, surprise, shock, and inspire. When I enrolled for Peace and Conflict Studies, I saw on the syllabus that there was a project. I was a podcast. I was like, what? Like, because I hadn't had anyone talk about the podcast. And the professor told us that it was the first time that this was being done in a class. So I was like, whoa, I put myself in some deep trouble, you know. But uh, it turned out to be a, a very, very fulfilling project. Like, if there's one thing I've really enjoyed doing so far, I called it was a podcast. Making a podcast felt much more rewarding than writing a paper because it felt like we were at least trying to make a difference instead of just submitting a paper that we would get handed back to us and would just be thrown away. It can actually go out into the world and be listened to and change someone's mind. Also, it's more emotional and you're trying to appeal to people more emotionally than if they're just reading kind of a report. I found the research part of the podcast a lot different than a paper because I felt like I had to get something that was actually substantial and that was actually interesting, at least to me, to, to make someone else care about it. Because if you're writing a paper, you have to have all your facts checked, you have to have good organization, but I'm not interested in a lot of the papers that I write. But this I felt like I had to be so that someone else would be too. Like you were going to be reading your, um, your work. So you also had to think about how it would come off when you were actually saying it out loud. So there's another element t to it where like you have to think more about style and, and sound and mm, things like um, how the language flows and, and if like certain words sound funny together or things like that. Because I had to consider this project as one that could be heard by anyone, I had to adjust the way I was writing my script um, into one that was more generalized. Um, if my parents were to listen to my podcast, how would I want them to understand the material? And so the podcast really gave me a really good opportunity to reach a broader audience about my concerns about landmines um, and to kind of talk about the Cambodian genocide and some of the things that aren't talked about all the time. Effect, or the main thing speaking to a broader audience affected was I just felt like I had to go more into detail. I had to speak like they didn't know what I was talking about. Cause I think the fact that it could be heard by anyone meant that it really had to be hard hitting. I think um, it's one thing to impress a professor, but if you're trying to appeal to anyone who's listening in on iTunes that you really have to um, appeal to a wider base. And you know your professor's interested in the problem, but are other people? So you really have to try to explain why it's important. There is definitely a variety of different conflicts that each student chose to focus on. And I think that having them on iTunes and being able to listen to them as a set um, is, is really cool because it brings together all different um, problems in the world. And so you can go from, from Irish terrorists to Cambodia to, um, play, to problems in the Middle East, really from all different kinds of things. And you get to see, like, hey, this, this kind of thing is happening everywhere. It's not, it's not an isolated issue. There are problems all over the world. I thought it was a cool project. I like that I could type my name in iTunes and something will come up. After showing my podcast to some people on my floor, we wanted to make a floor podcast and put one in like every couple weeks or so. So we haven't gotten around to do it because not too much happens. It's, it's a great feeling. Like I, I feel like I've uh, contributed something to the people of Dafu in one way or the other. Because uh, doing that podcast, um, I'm able to inform the people who are going to um, listen to it. 
So I think, you know, I know the other. I've helped the people with DAFO, and I'm happy about that. 